You guys see the jazz hands? You see the spirit fingers? <laughs> jazz hands and spirit fingers. On a Monday! Oh, it's Monday. What up, everybody? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Got Mr. Chips here, co-pilot. The other co-pilot, Biddy Brown, is unaccounted for. <laughs> but I got Mr. Chips here, so I feel good and safe. Safe and good, Mr. Duty. How you doing? No response from Mr. Duty Head. He says something in dog language with his eyes. He says, I'm tired. Easter is crazy. Was Easter crazy, Mr. Duty? Yeah, Mr. Chips had a hell of a good time partying it up Easter style. Eating some candy. He got some, uh, did you get some corned beef? Yep, you got some corned beef. We'll talk about that in just a minute. How was everybody's Easter weekend? It was pretty wild here. We had a great time, but uh, as I said, we'll get into that in just a minute. Because right now, we got to say what's up to Frank Dominguez, number one to the chat. Feels like we, it feels like a whole new year to, feels like a whole new year, you guys. Feels like a new year. April, what up? What up, April? And I'm preparing my mind for getting another year older. Uh, not the worst thing. I tell you, it's the worst thing to miss a birthday. That's the worst thing that you could do uh, is miss a birthday sometime. But uh, hopefully, coming up on another one, going to be 100 million years old. And that's amazing, right? That's a long run. Not too bad. Not too shabby. We also got to say hi to Phil Emerson coming in number two and Noah G third place. Oh, that's a record for Noah coming in third. What's up, Noah? Good to see you. Uh, quickly followed up by Alyssa Bentley, Savannah, the Aqualama, uh, bald and dangerous. Mr. Dougie himself. Good to see you. Uh, everybody was chatting early. Everybody was chatting early. Everyone's confused by the title, which is fine. We'll get into the title and there will be a video about it. So everybody will figure that out. Charlie List is here. Good to see you. What's going on? Rocky's Rocky. Uh, Mr. Dan Squire showing up. That's always a good. That's always a good sign, right? When Dan gets here. Steve Shrimpery, Mick Shrimpery, Shrimp Shrimperty, and more is here. Good to see you, Shrimp. Zombie Drummer. Good thing you're here. Otherwise, I would really wonder what was going on if I was like, oh man, Zombie Drummer's not here. It would kind of freak me out, my man. Good to see you, and thanks for the email earlier. Uh, definitely, I've done that exact same thing, so no worries. <laughs> Long story short, credit card expired. Happens to me sometimes, too. I always get those automatic payments set up, and then I get a notice from somebody like, Dude, you missed a payment. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? It's automatic. And they're like, yeah. Your card expired. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I've been down that road before, and it's definitely happened to me. Didn't know that it was going to expire. Even though it's written on the front, it happens to me all the time. Uh, like, one of my banks doesn't automatically send them out, also. I forget which bank, but who knows. Uh, Goldfish is here. Good to see you, Goldfish. Thanks for coming out. Let me open up the chat and get it over here. Dreams of Aquariums. Ooh, Dreams of Aquarium says, man, I missed the last live stream because of owls. And I'll probably fall asleep during this one. Anyhow, hope you all have a good one. Well, thanks, Dreams of Aquarium. Sounds like he's going to bed. <laughs> so his, actual, his name actually makes sense, right? 
Um, let's get the pop out chat going on so I'm not looking over here to the side. Yeah, there we go. Let's make it bigger. Let's make the pop out chat huge today. Yes, sounds super good. John Gonzalez is here. He says mass aquariums. I don't know what that means. Except for the fact that I will be appearing on the Mass Aquarium's live stream tonight. So if anybody is, uh, if anybody's staying up, and if anybody wants to see a different perspective of this show, or a live stream, or me, or Mike, that's a great place to tune in for it, because we will be live on the internet on Mass Aquarium's channel. Uh, so if you're not subbed up there, give it a check, give it a subscribe, and turn on the notifications for tonight. And then if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. You're in the driver's seat, not me. Right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Who else is here? George Clonaris. Clonaris. Hello from Australia. Awesome. We need to get more Australians on board here, you guys. We need to get more Australians on board. If you're in Australia, share this out and let all your friends know this is a good spot to swing by and talk about stuff or hear things you can chat in the live chat you can do whatever you want you can send in emails you can go crazy you can mash buttons on your keyboard like a maniac i don't know if anybody noticed but easter candy is making me a little crazy today because we had a wild time this weekend with the easter and when i say wild time it was not that wild but it was a lot of good times. We had a bunch of kids over. We had all the, the nieces, the nephews, the aunts, the uncles, the grandmas. No grandpas. No grandpas. No grandpas were around. Where were all the grandpas? I don't know. They were off fighting bears and doing grandpa manly stuff, cutting down trees or something, you know? So, no grandpas, but lots of grandmas and lots of good stuff. Uh, I got up uh, for Easter at 5 o'clock in the morning and got my smoker going so I could smoke some corned beef. And if y'all know a thing or two about this guy right here, I know, if, I know a few tricks around the grill just on accident, right? Just on accident, I know a few tricks around the grill, a couple of, couple of things couple of things, couple of, you know, stuffs. But if you're going to be smoking, you got to get up early. If you're going to smoke your meat, you got to get up super early. So I got up a half an hour early from when I normally get up. So instead of getting up at 5.30, I got up at 5. Got the smoker fired up. Got my corned beef in there. I actually trimmed down uh, one giant corned beef that was like, uh, I think it was, uh, all right, I don't, want, I don't want to know how many pounds it was, 20 four something like that cut it down into thirds and let me tell you something i got some leftovers which is awesome so um we got that going we had a bunch of family over had a great lunch uh, i got to see my mom and her husband uh, they came over uh, so generally a fantastic easter i hope everybody else's easter was super fun we did a big egg hunt even though it was uh pouring down rain and cold here um it was pouring down, pouring down rain and cold, but we just did the Easter egg hunt all throughout the house. As you guys know, we have a, we have a basement here and an upstairs and a main floor. So uh, we just hid them all around the house and let the kids go bananas. We only have one casualty of war from the, uh, from the massive egg hunt, uh, and that was a hook that hangs on the bath of, back of the bathroom door. <laughs> So, pretty minimal as far as uh, the wild, um, uh, the pretty wild uh, children's going for the eggs and stuff. So, worked out pretty good, and uh, I was happy to happy to say everyone uh, ate well. Everyone had a good time, a lot of good conversations, and uh, it was a beautiful day. Now, Saturday, on the other hand, Oh my lord, Saturday was a beautiful day. It was 65 degrees and sunny. 65 degrees and sunny on Saturday. And we got up nice and early uh, to have a little bit of fun around the house here. And then we got to go see Ready Player One with our homie Stacy. 
uh, who's uh, one of our one of our homies that goes and sees all the new movies with us. We like to do that. Uh, generally, Saturday morning is when we like to go. I, I don't know. I think it's a sign that we're getting old because we don't like to stay up on Friday night and try and go out to the movies. Um, a typical Friday night thing would be like, let's go get some food or something and then come home and go to sleep because we're tired. Um, hey, no more licking down here. What, what's going on with these dogs? Hey, what are you guys doing? This, this is not a sit down here and lick our feet extravaganza. Sorry, the dogs are over here. They're both over here frantically licking their feet for some reason. I don't know. Are you guys weird? Okay, yeah, both dogs are here, and they're both being weird. Um, some people in the chat, where did it go? Uh, Chicken Lips 2 saying, I uh, quit smoking meat a long time ago. just makes me tired, and I can never keep it lit. Uh, I will say... I have a new smoker, and I'll probably uh, make a video out of this uh, smoker. It's a nice vertical smoker, and it actually runs off of propane. I um, have to say, I'm very happy with it. Um, the only gas ones that I've ever used previously um, were ones that were, like, wired into a... Or, not wired. They were, like, plumbed with the gas into the building. So, uh, but this one, we got a new one here. Um... You know, long story short, Vicky is awesome, and she got she gets like reward points or whatever from her job, and we traded them in for a new smoker. It's fantastic. I'm I'm digging it. I'm liking the the uh, the gas technology because as Chicken List was saying, you can never keep it lit. It was always problematic, and I have to admit, this was pretty much. Uh, top off the water, make sure the chips are good, check my temperature, kind of stuff time time to time. And uh, ran smooth, ran smooth, maintained its temperature exactly how I wanted it. And uh, I was really happy with that performance. So uh, to answer some of the questions there in the chat, let me scroll back and see what's going on. Uh, but yes, actual gas smoker was pretty fantastic. I was pretty happy with it. And um, that was awesome. And let's see. G Bear says, "Hey man, 52 is an old. That's right. 52 ain't old, that's for sure." Uh April is bad. Haven't done my taxes yet from the fish nerd. Yeah, I've got mine done. I just have to send them in. Um I have to send in a check. As you guys know, uh as an independent creator guy, I got to pay all my all my taxes at the end of the year, which is uh kind of brutal, but you know, it is what it is. It's just a uh, nature of doing um uh, just the nature of uh, nature of uh, that live in a society. We got to pay our taxes, so I got to send my check out. I'm probably gonna just send it this week because yeah, I kind of knew I have to pay, so it's like I'll delay it, and then you know, then it comes and hits you right in the face. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Let's see, we got Tampa Tom in here saying, let's see a smoker video. Yeah, for sure. I'll definitely be, uh, I'll be doing a lot of, uh, uh, I'm going to be doing some whole chickens here. I got some, uh, I got some full beef briskets that I'm going to be doing for, uh, that I'm going to be doing for uh, my birthday barbecue, which is coming up fairly soon. It's about two weekends away, and uh, going to be having some fun with that. I'll probably have some fish fan people here. We'll probably shoot a little vlog and blow that up, send that up to you guys, and make you all uh, make you all super jealous. <laughs> I guess. I guess that's the only way to put it is that it's just to make people super jealous. You know what I mean? Uh, Jay Friends has a fish-related question here I want to answer real quick. Hey, Joel, would cherry shrimp eat spawned fish eggs? Um, you know, I couldn't necessarily answer that question in a 100% kind of way, uh, but I believe that if cherry shrimp could find the opportunity, they'll probably go for it. Um, not, I wouldn't say it's definitely their, their go-to food, um, but they, they might get a chance to rummage around in there most, uh, most fish will protect, protect their eggs quite a bit, though, so I wouldn't worry uh, about that too much. Uh, I haven't seen any real drop in um, spawns 
with uh, cherry shrimp being in my tanks, but it could be possible. So maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll get some people that have experienced that or not in the chat. Let's see if we can't summon the summon the fish fam and see what they see what their experience has been. But for me, not not particularly. I haven't really seen a, a big issue with that. Uh, I will say. Uh, we're going to talk about Ready Player One here for just a second because I did get a manage to check that out. And there's not that often do we actually get to see a Steven Spielberg movie. Um, and I, there, there'll be no spoilers here, you guys. So don't worry about that because I'm just going to talk about the context of the story, uh, not any specifics that go on. Um, but I did realize that when I saw that movie... Um, I didn't realize that a lot of um, a lot of uh, Spielberg mo movies go along the same lines for me as far as the character development never really hits that it it just never really hits that peak you know I don't ever feel super invested um, like in uh, Jurassic I think was that was Jurassic Park Spielberg oh, hold on I'm gonna feel like a jerk now if I we got to double check here because I feel like that was a Spielberg movie, right? Uh, but yeah, Spielberg was yeah okay. All right, I didn't want to. I don't want to go talking out the side of my mouth here, but I thought that uh, just wanted to double check that uh, Jurassic Park was a Spielberg movie. Um. But like in Jurassic Park, if uh, if somebody gets eaten by T Rex, I didn't really feel like I, I didn't really have any emotion about it. It was sort of just like, yes, that dinosaur ate them. Um, that was kind of that's kind of my critique of Ready Player One. So if you're going in, I thought it was a fantastic movie. It was really good. There just wasn't uh, a whole lot of story development or character development that I really um, uh, I really lust for from a movie. Um, and I also think that part of the context is is that in 2018, uh, we have so many companies out these days putting out such, so much cool long format shows like uh, like Game of Thrones. I mean, if you go look at like just how many hours Game of Thrones is, it's wild, man. Um, but you definitely do get that full story coverage, whereas uh, I think that Spielberg movie is... Um, it just along that vein of like we got to get it done in 100 minutes um which i i think is just the only thing that i would really critique about that movie is that the the uh the character development and stuff sort of falls flat for me but uh overall fantastic film i would certainly go buy a movie ticket uh, as we did uh it was certainly worthwhile to see in the theater and uh overall generally a darn good experience so um, that's just a little recap of the weekend. Uh, we had the big Easter, uh, we saw a movie, we did a bunch of other stuff too, but, uh, nothing of really like big note, you know, I'd like to tell you guys about laundry. Let me tell you guys about laundry. I can explain that really quickly. Uh, Vicky does 90% of it and I managed to help out and not screw it up. <laughs> I really, I honestly try to help her as much as I can with the laundry, but she's the winner. She is just a champ. She is a great woman, and I love her very much. Uh, and Jimmy is uh, showed up in the chat here, Mister Schwiski himself, just listing a whole bunch of uh, <laughs> Spielberg movies like Saving Private Ryan, Schindler's List, uh, Lincoln, Indiana Jones, Catch Me If You Can, The Terminal, great character development. Um, Brokies? I don't know what that means. Are those all are those all Spielberg? Hold on a second. Let's see what Spielberg's directed. Since we got talking on that for a second. What movies has he directed? Let's see. Oh, he's well, he's a producer on that. He's a producer on that. Producer, 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 producer. Um let me see here. Oh, he's actually just a producer. Executive producer. So, you know what? I thought Spielberg was a director, but he just produces everything. Well, color me an idiot, because I'm learning that now. I thought he was a director. He's just a producer. 
Wow, his name has been on so many things. Oh, okay. Well, color me... Color me wrong on this one. He's just the producer. So he's the money man. Okay, so he just tells everybody what to do. Okay, well, all right. My bad. I thought he was a director. Man. Uh, well, there's a blank spot in my brain right there, you guys. So uh turns out he's just the producer. Didn't even direct anything. Critically acclaimed credits to his name either as a director, producer, or writer. Okay, so he does do some directing, but his credits are all producer. Mm -mm 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 -mm. On IMDb. So maybe I'm... Maybe I'm lost. Bald and Dangerous says he used to be a director. I'm trying to figure out like how far back that is because almost everything says all, all the way back to 1961. He's the producer. Uh, okay, well, color me confused. But either way, my my uh, my uh, slight critique of Ready Player One. Still stands true, regardless of who directed it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. But either way, that uh, would be the thing that I would look out for if you go. Kevin Hayes is here with a super chat saying, uh, with a $2 super chat saying, long time, no see. Hi, guys. Well, thanks for the tip, Kevin. Not a question, but uh, just a $2 super chat. Uh, Alvin Alejo saying, finishing my shed while blasting the ocean outside. Oh, smart. Watch out. Your neighbors will think you're super weird. <laughs> uh, Maxwell Sonnemans, uh throwing up some prayers for Caleb. Uh-oh, what's going on with Caleb today? Um, tell Caleb hi. Ooh. Yeah, don't forget to uh, check out Caleb's GoFundMe. Uh, we got a bunch of cool stuff coming up with Caleb's GoFundMe soon. Very, very soon. Dan Squire says 57 directorial credits. I don't know. I'm looking at IMD right now, IMDB right now, and it says executive producer on pretty much everything. I don't know. Uh, Kuran Bong Aquatics. I don't know what a Kuran Bong is. I hope it's not paraphernalia, but... Considering it's from Australia, maybe it's a thing. Saying, keep doing your thing. I'm trying to start a similar thing in Australia. Awesome. That's great. I think the more people out there, uh, the more people out there creating and contributing, the better. I, uh, you know, I pretty regularly have had conversations with a lot of uh, either potential creators or current creators uh, asking for advice and things along those lines. And uh, what I, my recommendation I give to people is just keep doing stuff. Uh, there is really, um, there's really not a lot of barrier. Um, there's not a lot of barrier to posting up onto YouTube if you actually make something. Um, you know, that upload button is pretty much there. Uh, you basically just need to, you know, you, you need to verify your account. And there's a bunch of stuff that you need to do. And it can get wildly uh, complicated. And there's a lot of stuff that you need to do. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that you need to learn. And a lot of sometimes a lot of tools that don't necessarily need to be expensive, but a lot of tools that kind of need to be uh, acquired in order to be able to do this kind of stuff. But um, yeah, the more the merrier, man. Keep it coming, keep it going, and yeah, rock and roll, man. Koran Bong Aquatics with the $5 Australian Super Chat. I don't even know. Is Australian money more or not? I don't know. It's probably the same because it's green. <laughs> Ah, Terry's Tropical Tank says he has 57 credits as a director, including Ready, Ready Player One. Okay, I'm confused then, because I'm on IMDb, and it's just saying executive producer on everything. But maybe that's just IMDb being weird. Which is odd. But, okay, so he is a director. He's the highest grossing director by Worldwide Box Office. Okay, so he is the director. All right, I'm confused. Either way. I'm not Steven Spielberg. Either way, it was just my synopsis of Ready Player One on whether or not people uh, going into it maybe have something to uh, look out for or whatever. But 
Today we have a short show. We're doing a short show today because I will be appearing on Mass Aquariums um, at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time, which is 6 o'clock my time. Yeah, I don't think anybody out there will be mincing words. I'm not staying up to do a show at 9 o'clock at night. I mean, I probably would, but I'd be like, can we schedule that earlier? (laughs) Uh, But uh, because of that, I got stuff I got to do here for my lady, my partner, and um, and uh, so we're going to be doing the uh, a quick show today. It's going to be instead of two hours, uh, we'll be cutting it short so that I can uh, get all that ready. And then if you have a powerful lust for more show from me, as I said, I'll be on the uh, I'll be on the Mass Aquariums show, and uh, you guys can click over there, and then uh, yeah, I'll be there, right? Terry's Tropical Tank says I have to click on director. Well, I was just on Steven Spielberg on IMDb. Let me see. Oh, so he's... uh, Oh, okay. So IMDb loads as producer first. And then, oh, you click over to the directorial stuff. Oh, okay. That's why. I was like, this seems weird. You guys. All right. There we go. Mystery solved. So I guess if you're multifaceted and you've made ten billion dollars at the box office, you get multiple tabs on IMDb. Okay, so that's what I was doing wrong. Okay, now it makes more sense. There it is. Okay, well, well to anybody out there that was wondering what was going on, um, I guess he's got some. So Ready Player One came out, and they're gonna do West Side Story. Okay, I don't know. Maybe it'll be good. Uh, and an untitled Indiana Jones project. I guess they're maybe Shia LaBeouf's making a comeback. I don't know. <laughs> I do like his acting. He's a good actor. He's just a little weird whenever people have conversations with him. Uh, Eric Gone Mad with a $5 super chat saying, Along those lines makes me laugh out loud every time. Uh, Eric is privy to the fact that... Uh, That I'm always trying to not say along those lines. It's just one of those dumb things that pops out of my mouth, you know. Uh, It might as well be um or something like that. And uh, I try not to say it, but it's just just in there. It's just in my vernacular. So uh, I try not to, you know. Um, But, uh, yeah, I try to. I, I try to not do that. But I could get... I I, under, I fully understand why you would laugh at that, um, for sure. <laughs> so I didn't see in the chat if anybody had had any experience with uh, cherry shrimp eating their fish eggs or not. But it uh, doesn't mean it's not there. BC Fish Room says, Movies put me to sleep. If I'm sitting around doing nothing for more than 10 minutes, I'm out. Uh, I turn off um, I turn off my phone when I go to movies and stuff like that and just go, just like sitting in traffic, I just go, I, I look up how long the movie is and I go, oh, this is one hour and 48 minutes long. Okay, cool. I'm just going to be here for one hour and 48 minutes. You know, uh, Schwiski says to produce me a latte. <laughs> As you guys see, I have completely run out of Mr. Brown's. I've switched, uh, I had to go get a Starbucks today, mainly because I had to go get some parts, uh, from the parts store and, uh, I wanted a latte. So I went for it. It was $4 American and, uh, seems like I need to, I need to order up some Mr. Brown's. I'm just going to have to do it. I'm going to have to order some Mr. Browns for my birthday, and then, uh, you know, I'll be flush with them again for a little while, and I'll be back on the Mr. Brown tip. I don't know, man. Jimmy said he was going to get me some Mr. Browns, but he's a fibber. He lied. Or maybe he intended to and then just forgot. He's not a liar. <laughs> oh, we've got uh, some super chats here i got to get to right before we go over to the... Um, 
before we go over to the video. Uh, so let's grab those real quick. We got a 299 super chat from Brabra Jackson saying, uh, Borora Smaculatus got eight. Ever kept them? Advice. Um, the only time I ever kept these, uh, the Dwarf Rise Boros was two different occasions. Um, one of them for a very long time and a very successful time. And then one of the times very unsuccessful. Uh, so, um, I've had Rasboras, but the Dwarf Rasboras, uh, I've had, um, so the Rasbora Maculata, actually the, um, the green ones fail, fail. I, I couldn't even tell you how they failed or what happened. Um, uh, although I will say at the time, uh, me and the guy that were working together on fish projects were a little irresponsible, and oftentimes things caught on fire or exploded or, uh, you know, I name it. We had problems. And uh, so I couldn't really tell you exactly what happened with the green ones. Um, but uh, but we had some of the red ones uh, and uh, just had them for a really long time. They were actually really easy Um uh, I've had Brigitte's a bunch of times. They were pretty easy and not a big deal as long as you just uh, keep the water clean. That's going to be the biggest issue uh, is just maintaining a real steady, real clean water uh, for them. They're, they're pretty um, intolerant to ammonia spikes or, or swings or anything like that. Uh, so as long as you keep it nice and steady, uh, it will be um, – you'll do quite well, I think. And um, – because the the one time we had the green ones, they were in a really small nano tank, which was really which ended up we ended up getting rid of it because it just was so susceptible to just nonsense, um, especially because of its location and then how much it was being taken care of. Um, you know, it just wasn't getting constant attention that it really needed. Uh, so, but when. Um, uh, when we had the maculatas. They were in like a 50 gallon tank and that was actually, they were, you know, they were always blasting around in there doing stuff. And then, uh, once the colony got big enough, we'd see them a lot, but they hide, uh, they hide unless you have a bunch of open, open area where they can't hide. Uh, so I would typically put them in a tank that like basically only had a carpet in it and maybe just some, some stuff kind of up in the back. If you give them a hiding opportunity, they will hide like crazy. So that is a little confounding for sure uh mr b's fishing things uh with a 6.99 canadian super chat saying uh i scored a bunch of old window glass to make tops with have jumpers and trying to cut down on evaporation I'm not a fan of poly tops uh what do i use i don't use tops anymore i don't i don't even bother with tops anymore i don't really care about evaporation personally um and uh, no, I don't. I don't use tops anymore. I don't like the acrylic tops because the acrylic will bow. Um, it just doesn't even matter what light uh, or even the thickness. I mean, I tried. I tried super thick, like three quarter inch acrylic once, and that started to bow. Um, so that was lame. But uh, I guess if I had like really skinny openings, I might go with an acrylic or something like that. But uh, I just don't run tops anymore. I just gave up on worrying about it <laughs> personally. Um, is that is that bad? Might be bad. I don't know. That might be a bad thing to say. But I just gave up on tops. I, I just don't even worry about them anymore. I'm always reaching in there, and the tops will get broken or. I don't know, they'll be like leaning up against something or something goofy like that. It just seemed like an extra thing that I just wasn't really doing anything with. Um, so, you know, uh, gone mad is asking, can you drop off some 50 plus cherry shrimp on your way to Michigan? Um, I don't No, I can't, uh, because we'll be driving, much slower than I'd want to keep cherry shrimp in a bag. Yes. So. Yes. I won't be able to drop them off because we will be driving too slow. Too slowly. 
Uh, Bentley Pascal says, someone had mentioned, I've had similar from a breeder before that cherries usually clean the eggs if they're good. If they're fungus, they eat it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've actually, I've heard that before. I've never personally witnessed that myself, uh, but I have seen that throughout forums and uh, and uh, I have seen that over time, and I've heard that certainly from a lot of people um, uh, over the years. So that definitely is a possibility. I know a lot of people have employ uh, um, employed that tactic, and uh, so I think over time that uh, I would say I've seen it so many times that it probably is true. But I don't know. Uh, but I certainly wouldn't doubt that the shrimp would want to go for the fungus uh, messed up eggs for sure. Uh, that does not sound strange. That sounds pretty that sounds pretty on point to me, realistically. Uh, Jay Friend says, yeah, I've got some CPDs coming in Friday, and I was going to put the leftovers in the shrimp tank. Was just curious about the shrimp eating them. They never really seen it discussed. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress about it too much, honestly. Uh, Dank Tank says, I put cherries in with the eggs to eat the non-fertile fungus ones. Yeah, so there are multiple people busting into the chat. Um, see, I when I go into my breeding projects these days, um, so the breeding projects I used to do back in the day, I used to get super uh, meticulous about them. Like, this is the only thing in this tank. Um so that I could kind of track specifics of what was going on. So like if I, when I, I used to do a ton of breeding projects with betas and stuff, for instance, and uh, I didn't want to have other stuff in the tank that A, could either infect or have a problem or, um, you know, predate. I didn't I wanted to avoid predation and that kind of stuff. Um, and then over the years, over the years, over the years, my... Um, my breeding projects have either stayed like that, like uh, when I had the 240 with the crystal shrimp, I would basically keep all of the good crystal shrimp in a 240 gallon aquarium and keep them breeding in there. And I didn't have other stuff in there to cause problems. So um, that would that would be a good example of like following that same parallel. Um, so I pretty rarely would I have had something that I was specifically breeding with the cherry shrimp, right? Because if I was breeding the cherry shrimp, I wouldn't want predation from any kind of fish. And then on top of that, I also wouldn't want issues with um, cherry shrimps either like messing with um, fish fry or something like that. But that definitely sounds kind of on point with... Um, that they probably would eat the fungus eggs, that's for sure. Brian Brown with the 199 Super Chat saying, Driftwood breaking down in an aquarium, a problem? Um, only aesthetically and for cleaning. Um, so if you have uh, driftwood that's breaking down in your aquarium, it's not unhealthy for the environment. It just will boggle your mind with either trying to vacuum the little bits out uh, or the driftwood actually crumbling apart. Uh, will probably drive you crazy. So, um, but uh, health-wise, that's not a big deal unless you have a type of wood in there that is breaking down for a bad reason, like cedar. If you had cedar in there, sometimes certain types of cedar can break down and, and cause problems in an aquarium. But uh, if you've had it in there for a really long time, I wouldn't worry too much about it, other than aesthetically you might want to swap it out for something else that's going to last longer but every type of wood that is submerged in say 75 degree water for a long period of time will start to break down uh, over time it's just whether or not we'll notice the timeline or not <laughs> you know if it's six months and it breaks down and falls into a clump we'd probably notice it if it's 16 years we probably wouldn't notice it so if that hopefully explains that situation for you uh, let's see here. Doug, are you teaching the Duke big words? What's happening here? What's going on? <laughs> big words. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, sorry guys. I can't, I can't catch up with the chat right now because we got a $5 super chat from Jeff Rose Fishkeeping saying, I bought some L182s from Mile High Plecos yesterday and I'm excited. Oh yeah. What's up, Joel and the fish fam? Ooh, Jeffro's got some brand new fish in from Mile High Plecos. 
That is awesome. Uh, I've never ordered anything from Mile High Plecos. Um, I think maybe the extent of my interactions with Mile High are from, like, uh, realistically from the chat on Bob Steenfot. I've seen him on there. I've seen Tim Her. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they put videos out or anything like that. I was actually trying to find... I noticed them earlier in the chat, but I don't have uh, I don't have a link there, so who knows um, if they have YouTube videos or not. But uh, I've seen him in the chat, and he's always blowing up monster uh, <laughs> monster super chats on Steenfods, so pretty cool. Um, all right, so since this is the short show, we got to get to the video portion, video portion, and explain. What I'm talking about in the title, because we had some people going like, PTO, you mean paid time off? You mean people are confused by the, what is that, an acronym, I guess? It actually is for power take off, okay? So this is an old, um, I don't know if it's an old trucker term or an old agriculture term. You normally see a power take off on a tractor or um, some type of truck that needs to supply power somewhere else, like a tow truck. Um, when it needs to supply power to the tow equipment off the back, there'll be a power take off that runs off of the main power plant of the vehicle itself. So, um, like if you see, um, Ooh, here's a great way to explain it. If you see like an excavator, right? It's like eating up, eating up the ground and stuff. It has a main motor that actually is sending power from the hydraulics, driving every specific hydraulic throughout the system. But that is considered a power take off that runs from the harmonic, the harmonic dampener that runs to the hydraulic system within it, right? So it actually just has one big motor running the whole system and then it's dispersing power around, okay? Um, on a tractor, like a farm tractor or something like that, the power takeoff hangs, hangs off the back, right? So if you ever see a tractor that's driving around and it's got uh, equipment hanging off the back of it, like chewing up the ground, right? That is actually running from... Um, that is actually running from the main motor, okay, of the whole tractor itself. It's just driving around, and it actually has a, basically an extra part hanging off of the motor that's being spun around, and it's sending some of that power takeoff to that uh, to the other systems, like the auxiliary systems and stuff. Now, in the vein of that thought process, that's what I'm doing here with the CO2 uh, reactor setup, and. Uh, those of you that have been following my channel for a long time know that I have built a whole bunch of incarnations of these uh, CO2 reactors. Uh, I build them essentially out of PVC scraps, parts I got lying around. Uh, actually, someone was asking me a while ago um, who who sent me this clear PVC pipe that I use for it. Uh, it was actually a fan that sent it in. I haven't seen him in, in a long time. Eddie Kaitia actually sent the clear pieces in. And, uh, he had a, like a chunk left over and uh, sent it up here uh, because he was like, oh, I've got a chunk of that in my garage. Do you want it? And I was like, sure. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen Eddie in a long time. I hope he's doing great. Um, just a shout out to Eddie. I'm still using your clear pipe you sent me, brother, and I, I, I appreciate it to this day. I use it every day. And um, so then the rest of the plumbing parts there, you guys can pick up at your local hardware store. It's all stuff that you guys could use. Um, I did post a video just a little while ago that is, um, I think it's it's literally me assembling it in like seven minutes live with no cuts in the video so you guys could actually see oh wait a minute this is how this guy puts this thing together okay and uh you can figure out the part lists um so yeah this is actually a power takeoff because i'm using that big dc pump that big direct current pump that actually converts alternating current from the wall into a direct current and it's actually the power plant of this whole aquarium system so all the water that moves up around the aquarium and then back down the aquarium and then is pulled through the sump that is what is driving this whole thing now i did have a small utility pump that i was utilizing to run the reactor 
Now, this was causing me problems from time to time because the pump wouldn't necessarily self-prime just the way that it was set up. So then I'd come into the fish room and I'd hear this and I'd be like, ah, that stupid reactor pump because I had it running on a timer. Now, because it only runs about eight hours out of the day, I was going, hey, I'm going to save power because I don't want to have this thing running when I'm not utilizing it. So the pump would actually turn off when I wasn't using it. Now, it being hooked up on a timer was causing it problems because it sometimes wouldn't fully fire back up because it just isn't necessarily a self-priming pump. But I was looking at the pump and I was going, hmm, like how much wattage does this little pump use? So how much wattage was I saving? And I can't remember and I don't want to misquote HF 16. So we got to see, we got to look this up. I don't want to misquote these guys because I love these pumps. Uh, it's actually a Rio uh, HF pump that's down there. And I don't know. Oh, come on. Of course, it's not like looking that up. Uh, so let's see the Rio plus a okay hold on a second here let me look this up because that's the wrong pump but this is along the right line so what I was actually running on there was a Rio pump and I need to find the right one so let me go on to uh... guys I'm on Amazon's Let's see, Rio HF pump. Let me find one here. I know I will find them. It's the, uh, they're the Rio HF, which stands for Hyperflow. Uh, and I believe the one that's on there is a 20. And I was trying to find that through Google search and it was sending me to Rio de Janeiro, which is not, uh, is not good. It is, they're a great fully submersible pumps. They go completely under, they work fantastically. Uh, ba -ba -bum 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 -bum. Here it is. Can be used for water circulation and comes with all attachments to operate as a main filtration pump. 100 watts. Okay. Now that's a problem because 100 watts running. Um, let's see. 24 hours cost. Let's look this up real quick. Eight hundred and seventy-six kilowatts per hour per year, or kilowatt hours per year. Sorry. Um, now, throughout the year, that would become an issue. Okay, we wouldn't necessarily want to run that kind of wattage throughout the year when I'm only using the CO2 reactor an hour before the lights go on, then for the duration of the lights, and then it turns off an hour before the lights turn off, okay? So I wouldn't want to waste all that electricity just running this pump all willy-nilly 20 hours a day. So then I stepped over and I went over to my DC pump and I was like, hmm, I've got a lot left in that DC pump, okay? I've got, it only runs at about 70%. So I have about 30% more to run this thing full speed ahead, right? If I wanted to run it full speed ahead. Okay, which means, boy, I've got a lot of headroom left on this pump with how it's set up so that I could actually just add some more, like, oof, just let's just throttle this thing up a little bit. Now, I've used two, I've utilized two bulkheads and a T to split off so I could split off some of the flow. Now, I sat down and I started looking at the calculation, realizing, oh, wait a minute, it's only going to take four more watts, okay, four more watts of electricity to run this CO2 reactor off of the power takeoff, okay? Now, it will be running 24 hours a day, but that's only four watts versus 100 watts, you know? So if we do the math on the 24-hour period, I'm saving quite a bit. Now, if we do the math 
on only an eight hour period, that does cut into the savings, but overall it's gonna be a big time savings, okay? On just electricity used and the convenience of, hey man, if the main pump is off, I'm going to have to get this system running again and find out what's going on. Whereas with the CO2 reactor, it'd be over there rattling like, oh man, it's not primed again. So then I have to go like pull it out, get shake it out, get the air in it, and then dump it back in and in there again. And it's occupying the third chamber of my four chamber sump. Now, this third chamber, it's going to be awesome for me to actually have this third chamber unoccupied with equipment or crazy water flow going around in it. And that's the main reason for that is, is because now I'm going to be able to build a really cool um, aquaponic immersed tub that will actually go in the third chamber right there, which also means I'm going to be able to, I'm going to be able to, um, utilize, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Not horizontal, a vertical filtration more and more effectively, which I'm excited for. I'm excited to do more work al along those lines. <laughs> it actually made sense to say along those lines that time, not the second time when I started talking about actually what I just said, which is kind of ridiculous, but whoosh. All right. So I think we got through a bit of the presentation there. Now I'm going to double check as we go through the chat here to see what I missed, to see what kind of questions people got. Uh, you know, I'm sure people are going to ask me about what kind of glue was I using? What's this? What's that? What is he doing? What is happening? But hopefully I explained it. Um, overall, if uh, if we account for the 24 hour period at four extra watts for 24 hours against the 100 watts for only eight hours, let's do some quick maths here. <laughs> 88 watts a day is going to be saved overall from running that pump 24 hours a day versus it only running for eight hours, right? I think that's kind of close in the math, but whatever. Even if it's 80 watts, that's still cool, right? So uh, we're actually just utilizing the main power plant of the tank now, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. And I've unoccupied uh, a space in the sump, which means I can do more projects with the crazy, crazy sump without having to build a whole new sump system, which, by the way, that is going to start happening uh, at some point in time, I cannot tell you when that is going to be, and it will be at some point in time. Woo. Candy Overhauls posted the affiliate link to order from the Aquarium Co-op, and I will take a second here to endorse and fully endorse my homie and your homie, uh, Kobe, from the Aquarium Coop. If you've never been there before, those guys are back in action selling the Fluval 3.0 light and I cannot stress enough if you guys are interested in getting this light go get it okay I've been messing with a broken one okay and long story short somebody was stabbing this thing with a screwdriver somebody hit it with a hammer uh, I believe somebody threw it out of a car I've been messing with a broken one and I am super enthusiastic about the broken one that I own okay um, so I would definitely go check out those lights if you are gonna get some plants and stuff like that from the aquarium co-op which I highly recommend um, hugely supportive of the show hugely supportive of the fish fam and they do crazy crazy quality stuff they do crazy quality work there uh, I would definitely check those guys out and if you head through the link it helps me talk trash to uh aqua pros mike mr shakespeare himself and uh it's just always a good time to uh be able to razz each other over something like that because uh, i'd just be like hey man you might have more fans but i got better fans what up dog right you know what i'm talking about the oceaneers are far more gangster than than the Shakespeare's, right? <laughs> I think they're the Shakespeare's. I'm not sure. Uh, speaking of a self-appointed 
propaganda promotion. Um, we just went through another fantastic mon month with the Patreon. If you haven't been over to check out the Patreon, you can go over there. There's some links. There's some stuff. There's pictures, banners, I don't know, a bunch of crazy stuff, shirts, stickers, stuff that you guys could buy, and uh, you could certainly check out any of that stuff at any time. The Patreon is a monthly supporting of uh, being able to make this show, being able to drive up to do the real fish talk, drive out and help people, and uh, do all the crazy stuff like go to conventions and meet you guys, and come meet you guys in person. Um, that's what the Patreon is for. It's confusing to people. I get it. It's just... Just a once a month thing and we lost a bunch of patreonizers to the new month because that's just what happens every month we lost 20 we were so close to 300 and now we're back down to 277 patreonizers we're trying to hit that 300 mark we were so close and then we got chopped down at the knees but I can't tell you guys how appreciative I am of how everything is going so well. It is hard. I am tired. But it is going fantastically. Thank you guys. And uh, especially a big thanks to everybody who's been on the Patreon. Everybody who's been supporting all the Super Chatters. Everybody out there. Now let me get back to answering some questions here instead of talking about self-promotion nonsense. Hey, I'm sorry. It's a necessary evil. You know, the mortgage company doesn't let me not pay them. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, I almost knocked my coffee over and that would have been, oh, that would have been a damn shame. Kevin Keener with the 199 Super Chat saying, is the fish room going full solar at some point? Now, is that my long-term goal? I bet you it is. That is one. That is for sure my long-term goal. Uh, it looks like the solar laws, rules, regulations here are currently in a good state here where I live, the, the county that I live, the district that I live in. Uh, it looks like they're pretty good, but we do have a problem. Uh, we are waiting on local, the local... I don't know. Let's just call them government. Let's just just give them the the blanket term government. We are waiting for them to come through on uh, voting uh, for the future purchase of kilowatt hours from um, you know uh, from consumer based solar power. Uh, because one of the big advantages to having solar power is that you. Uh, send power back into the grid, like if you're making too much power, and then they pay you back per kilowatt hour. Currently, in the district that we live in, that contract only lasts until, um, ooh, I believe March of 2019. Yes, I think it's March of 2019 which is under a year now and that if they don't vote on extending that um if they don't vote on extending that contract then it's not going to be worth it for somebody like vicky and i to set up a lot of solar power um it is my goal uh, to set up the system from solar power, but honestly, if local government makes it uh, in unattainable, right? Is that word? Is that right? Is that correct? Unattainable? Hmm. Inattainable? Unattainable? Hmm. Either way, uh, if they don't vote on carrying that contract through, then it will be kind of pointless for us to spend that much money and then go. Uh, so we never get paid back for anything because it is illegal to be 100% off the grid here. So you still have to pay to be hooked up to the power. So um, if we were going to go into an extensive project, we would want to make sure that we have a contract in place to be able to sell the power back, right? And um, that is going to be the decision that we're going to make we may or may not just get some small panels right um we may or may not get some small panels in order to operate some of the stuff easier at a lower cost but we would certainly have to um 
you know, we would certainly have to sit down and crunch the numbers in, in regards of whether it would be worth it or not. Uh, most of our power supplied here is hydroelectric, and um, in Washington State, they are pretty Mm, they're pretty gung-ho about doing the best that we can with the environment, like installing uh, fish ladders. They actually move fish around to make sure things are um, as close as possible to uh, the natural environment with us also utilizing dams and stuff like that. And I I'm certainly not here to get into the argument of whether or not dams are good or bad. Uh, but I will say in Washington State, they are doing a pretty pretty good job of making sure that our electricity comes from positive sources as opposed to, you know, um, you know, burning garbage or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, it, and it may, it may not be worthwhile for Vicki and I to get a bunch of solar panels to run the entire house off, um, and the whole entire house and system. And then if there is no contract in place to sell that power back to them, because uh, it might be like, it might, it might be like a $16,000 project, right? But we might be, be able to sell, for instance, like $400 worth of electricity every month back into the, uh, back into the grid, right? Um, which eventually would pay off the investment and turn it into a, um, into a bonus, but in the meantime, right now, like I said, the local government has not voted on that contract, whether they're going to extend it or not. Because right now it is a pretty good contract that um, we buy our kilowatts right now at uh, $0.07 cents a kilowatt, I believe. I might be off on that. Um, and they buy back, or they buy at... Um, I think it's 6.2 kilowatts or something like that. So you could see how it could work out in your favor uh, if you have big enough panels and stuff that you would pay back in and then you'd have, you know, the end of every two months, you'd be getting a bonus essentially and uh, pay off your investment of the solar. Uh, now, if I was to move somewhere like Mateo is out in Chihuahua, out there in, you know, the no man's land out in the mountain air... <laughs> um, I would, I would certainly look into, um, and one of the counties that, I, that, that I have been fairly interested in, um, has some pretty good, um, has some pretty good reg current, current regulations in regards to, you could be off the grid if you like, um, or you could, um, try to pay back or, or uh, try to sell power back to the grid if you if you like but um, we shall see how that goes over time uh, I, you know I'm not a landowner there so that could be problematic in the fact that you know as not a landowner that I might not get the full scope of what's going on uh, but uh, as Mateo chimes in, we like our solar and wind. Yep. Um, wind would probably be an option out there. As you, uh, If you've never been out to the area, it gets windy every afternoon, <laughs> which is kind of nice. Actually, I don't like the stagnant air. Um, but Big Texas Tanks with a $2 super chat saying, how big are your solar panels on my vision board? Um, I did send my vision board to uh, Kobe the other day. Uh, my vision board is pretty simple, but one of the big things that's on the vision board is the, the gigantic aquaponics setup. Uh, and uh, as he was asking last week in, real, in the Real Fish Talk, there isn't even a house on my uh, vision board. He was asking what, uh, you know, how big was the house? How big is the house going to be? But um, there isn't even a house on my vision board because it's just assumed that I probably would get a house. But as... Uh, as Vicky has pointed out over the years, I would probably just live in a giant warehouse myself. Uh, as long as I had a shower and a kitchen in it, I'd be good to go. <laughs> um, so my vision board has a giant barn warehouse. It has a giant uh, aquaponics warehouse. Um, it also has a sheep nursery. And most of them are offset by the uh, mountains in the background. 
So um, that's where I want to live. It's where I want to move to. Right now I can see out my window Matt Rainier, which is kind of good, but I definitely cannot walk to it. <laughs> but I do want to live in range of... Uh, I want to live essentially in horse range, horseback range of being able to go up into the mountains. Um, so that basically puts me at 20, 25 miles. So, uh, that's, that's essentially where I would want to live. And, uh, that's on, that's on my vision board of, uh, where we want to move to. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see when that happens. It's going to take time. It's going to take time just plodding along and doing the stuff. Uh, and, you know, bear in mind, wherever I move to has got to have uh, a super fast internet. Luckily, one of the areas that I looked at has opened up the uh, the internetings, right? They've opened up the internetings to uh, fiber optic in the area. Uh, and there actually currently are eight service providers in the area that I want to move to. And uh, one gigabyte service is readily available. Awesome, right? So um, really cool. That's one of the areas I've been looking into. And some people have asked me o over the years, they're like, what are you doing all this research for? And I'm like, I'm like a Boy Scout that never even made it to whatever the next level of Boy Scout is. Um, I like to be prepared. And not start forest fires also. Uh-oh, guys. We've run out of whatever this goofy latte was. Um, but we have a super chat we got to hit up here at the end with Mass Aquariums, uh, which I will be appearing on Mass Aquariums tonight at uh, my time. 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, which is 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And don't ask me about any of the other time zones because I don't know. But if you can't figure it out from that, I don't know what to tell you. Um, we got a $20 Super Chat from Mass saying live stream machine. I don't know that I'm a live stream machine. I just work hard, brother. Always working hard. Always working hard and I'm prepared. I like to do my research, you know what I'm saying. So if we get a second here to uh, look through the chat, see if we got any questions, concerns, comments, or complaints, we'll see. Ooh, Randy Hightower saying, so Eatonville. Let's see where Eatonville is. Is that Eatonville, Washington? Let me zoom out. I'm trying to remember exactly where Eatonville is. No, not Eatonville. No, New Reliance. <laughs> um, let's see. So, okay, hold on. Who was asking that? Randy. I think it was Randy Hightower, right? Yes, Randy Hightower is saying, so Eatonville, Washington. Um, I've had some great times in uh, Eatonville, but uh, I would say personally for me, I would want to be deeper. I'd want to be deeper in there uh, in the mountains. If I was going to be in the Mount Rainier, I would probably go for somewhere like Packwood, maybe. Um, I guess Ashford's pretty close. Elba's close. I've always had a great time in Elba. Um, I never go off the Highway 7 to get to Eatonville, personally. Uh, I've, I've visited there a few times, but I never get totally crazy. Um, I never get totally crazy with that uh in that spot so i've never never gone totally nuts in eatonville but maybe i'll check it out maybe i'll uh maybe i'll grab noodle legs and we'll run out to eatonville we'll hang out there eat some sandwiches and then we'll jam out to uh mount rainier and try and run up to the top i'm gonna foot race him it's gonna be good i think it'll, it'll probably make a vlog or something right <laughs> Let's see. Terry's Tropical says, isn't Cub Scout, Weeblo, Boy Scout, Eagle Scout? Um, yeah, I was a Cub Scout, but once I got to the Boy Scouts, I got, uh, me and my whole group got the boot. Long story short, shenanigans, things caught on fire, uh, explosions, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, me and my whole group got kicked out of Boy Scouts for being bad. <laughs> Wasn't the worst thing ever, but no one was harmed in the making of that getting booted out of the Boy Scouts. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh my gosh, we've got and also another super chat, one from Chicken Lips Deuce. The 555 super chat saying, Latte Fund. 
Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm short on my Mr. Browns. I got to get me some Mr. Browns and order them up so I'm, I'm ready to go uh, so I can maintain my live stream machine status, right? <laughs> Do 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 do. Uh oh. You guys, we're coming up on the end of the show here because we're getting close to the end of the show because we have uh we're being preempted. We're being preempted because we're going to be going over to Mass Aquariums tonight for a one-on-one -on -one Q and A extravaganza. So if you're not tired of hearing my voice, you can go over there. And you get the bonus of hearing Mike's voice and us talking back and forth. Uh, we got that coming up. Uh, if you're still freaking out and you're having a powerful lust for more, no worries. The Real Fish Talk will be live tomorrow at 3 o'clock before uh, Kobe gets on a hot flight to China in the middle of the night or something. I'm not sure. I think he's taking a crazy red eye, but... Who knows? Um, Real Fish Talk will be hot and fresh tomorrow. Um, I know uh, I got a topic from a, a fan here that we're going to talk about, and one of them is going to be water test kits because it's a short topic. I, I think we'll jam right through it because it's pretty quick. Uh, Michael Davis says, I was a Boy Scout, but it sucked because of no cookies. Agreed. Where's the cookies, you guys? Where's the cookies? All right, uh, but I want to thank everybody for coming out today. We've got three minutes left, and then I've got to go prep dinner for my lady and uh, get. Uh, I got to change my pants and get ready, as I, you know, I don't want Mike judging me if I'm going on mass aquariums tonight, and uh, you know, have dirty plumber pants on. You know, uh, hopefully, y'all learned something today from the uh, from the video section. We did a bunch of plumbing and stuff like that, and uh, I want to give an extra thank you to our super chatters on the day starting out with my homie your homie kevin hayes thank you very much alvin alejo thank you koran bong aquatics coming up with some uh coming up with a super chat awesome uh awesome uh, aussie aussie action and uh working on some um Working on some Australian style fish videos. I'm gonna click the subscribe onto uh, Corumbang Aquatics. Let's see what he's got going on here, real quick. Uh, let's see, we got some videos. We got some videos. We got the biggest uh, Australia retail store. Oh, look at that. He's got some cool videos on here. So, yeah, check those out. Gone mad with a $5 super chat. He doesn't have a YouTube channel, so don't worry about that. Uh, Barbara Jackson, thank you very much for chiming in on a Monday, getting all, getting all, getting on on a Monday, digging it. Mr. B's Fishing Things, thank you very much. Ryan Brown, Jeff Rose Fish Keeping, always with the cool avatar, thank you very much. Kevin Keener, Big Texas Tanks for sure. Uh, Mass Aquariums, thanks again, and I'll talk to you, Mass, Mr. Angry Mike, I'll talk to you later. And Chicks and, Chicks and Lips too. <laughs> chicken lips too thank you very much guys and thanks everybody for coming out have a happy monday don't go totally crazy out there later is anybody seen that button around here oh there's the button